Hey guys, this is Colby. Uh, today we're going to be working on the back armor for the clone trooper that we were working on last time. Uh, basically just for the armor. Last time we made the chest piece here, which you can see. Uh, so now we're going to work on this back piece and all these little details. Uh, it's pretty easy. So let's get started. Starting off, go ahead and set up your image references. Uh, if your image reference here in the back is like pretty much on the front view, uh, basically all you have to do is go to front view, just press the little Y button here. should pop up in the corner on the top right uh, you'll see a little icon uh, basically it'll show you all the little front views and side views and then all that's all the directions uh, you'll basically just click on the green y uh, when it pops up so once you're in front view you can press one on your numpad uh, and basically you're just going to grab this image reference in the back that we set up last time uh, if you don't know how to set up an image reference you can just watch the previous video at the beginning i'll show you how to do that uh, basically you're just going to base, uh, move this side here to the center. Let's move it on the x-axis. You can use whatever you can to the arrow tools to assist you. So I'm going to press G and X and just slide it on the x-axis, the right axis. And just move it right about here in the center. And that looks good. Uh, so now we're going to move it pretty much to the front uh, right here. We just want it to be in front of the side view. So that way it doesn't block off the uh, view of the actual model that we've been making. Which is going to be right here. Uh, so if we had it right here, block it off. So, so that's why we have it right here. So now you'll basically just put Shift S, right click on the center point on any point of this uh, picture here. So right about here, that's a good spot. Uh, so now we're going to press Shift A, and mesh. We're going to create a plane. Uh, let's rotate it so RX 90. So on the X axis at 90 degrees. You can also use this hole here to rotate the buttons. Now we can see all the gizmos, so you can drag on the red axis. Pretty much just trying to get it straight. That way we can start working on the back view of this, uh, uh, basically the back armor here. So with your plane added, go into edit mode on the plane. Press tab for a shortcut. Uh, press control R twice down the middle. We're going to press three, so go to face mode. Uh, select one of the faces here. Press X to delete half of the face. Go back into object mode and add a mirror modifier in this uh, wrench bar tool. Add modifier, mirror, internal clipping, uh, front side view, and now we're ready to start symmetrizing across. So if we just scale the whole thing down in object mode, we can kind of basically start working around this bottom section here. So basically, we're going to base uh, just model around the uh, box here, the square box first. So we're going to model around the outside of it, and then we'll basically recenter and extrude a face that kind of uh, closes inward and closes off this section. So let's go ahead and start creating the shape. Uh, you can go into side view and move your uh, mesh basically to right by here on the side view. It's a, it's a bit of an angle. So you can grab this top edge and move it back on the y-axis. Do the same for the bottom, just match the reference. Just like that. So now we can go ahead and start just kind of keeping things low poly. Uh, grab this edge in edge mode and just kind of move it to the corners here. Uh, keep things low poly so that way they're easier to work with. Just make sure to match it to your reference as you go. Uh, one more thing. If you don't know how to switch to back view, just press 1 on your numpad. And then press 9 on the top right. Now it'll switch over to back view. Uh, alternatively, you can also just press the Y on the button here. So go to positive Y rather than negative. Now to switch over to back. Uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, so just keep that in mind. Basically, we're just going to go back into edit mode and just re pretty much extrude around the sides of the mesh. So here we have the corners, pretty much good. Uh, so now we can go ahead and grab this edge here and just extrude it to the side of the rib cage. So grab this edge in edge mode, press E to extrude, and we're just going to straighten it out, match it to the reference. Uh, it looks kind of low poly for now, but that's fine. We can pretty much worry about all the low, high poly stuff later. So go into side view, press 3 on your numpad, uh, and then basically just press X to switch over to side view. It's kind of hard to see, but basically you'll just uh, try to measure around the ribcage here. 
move all the way inside. Press S, Y, then zero to straighten it out. There we go. So now let's keep extruding upward. So grab this edge, press E to extrude, pretty much to this point here, because that's where it kind of splits off from this section. Let's go into side view and match the reference here. So this is a bit further back, pretty much like right about here. Just make sure it looks good from the front view as well. So there we go. Uh, and just keep extruding upward. Just grab this edge, press E to extrude, pretty much to this corner point here. You can also do this pretty much right about here as well. That works. Let's move it to the reference and match it. Let's move it to side view. So there's a bit of an arc right here. It's very circular. Uh, we can pretty much add a curve here in a second. But basically just focus on the top of this entire piece. So now go ahead and we can start uh, basically adding a curve to this uh, piece here. Let's so press Control R right about here. Left click. We're going to move it pretty much right down the middle. Left click again to place it. Uh, grab this, this vertice here. Go into vertice mode and just move it to pretty much to match the reference. A pretty strong curve. You can add as many as you need to to match this overall curve. Uh, pretty much also we're going to basically be uh, finishing off this section and bridging it off. Make sure that you have clipping on. I grab this edge here and press E to extrude and move inward. Collapse it. Uh, pretty much move this vertex down and just create this little arc right here. I match it to your reference as well. Let's go to side view and just kind of make sure it looks good. At this point, you're pretty much just tweaking the vertices and adding new edge loops to fill in the curves. So right here, we should probably add another curve as well. Press Control R, left click twice, move it down a bit, uh, and just kind of place these vertices a bit better. Don't worry too much about the entire curve. We can add a subdivision modifier to help us out and try to create the curve naturally for us. Basically, to assist, uh, try to keep things as low poly as you can, so that way they're easier to work with at the starting phase. So basically, we're almost ready to start to go ahead and uh, extrude this box outward. Uh, so I'm also going to add another edge loop, pretty much just right about here, uh, to basically make this section a bit more round. Move it outward a bit so on the x-axis, just make it a bit more roundish. Looks nice. And we can go ahead and finish this section off. Uh, so now we're ready to go ahead and start basically extruding this box section here. Oh, uh, for the box, basically, just go into edge mode. Press hold down shift and alt at the same time on the left side of your keyboard. And select this set of inward edges on the inside of the box here. Grab this edge, and it'll automatically select all of the uh, linked edges to that pretty much a single edge that you selected first. Press E to extrude. It might help to go into uh, front view, back view, and just press E uh, and scale it down. And just match it to the reference. You can scale it up as much as you need to. Go and tweak some of the uh, faces here. So this is a pretty uh, crooked curve. We need to go and fix it. Make this a straight line. Let's grab all these edges. Hold on Shift. Press X or S and then X and then zero. And that'll straighten it out for you. Uh, I can do the same for the top here. S is U zero and then S and then U zero. Move them to the reference. Uh, so now you can go with side view, and we can go ahead and move it outward. Just like this. It doesn't match the reference perfectly. Uh, but that's fine because it looks enough like it that it's pretty recognizable as a clone back armor piece. That's fine enough for me. Uh, so now we just press S, Y, 0. And just move it in. Move it up a bit so we need to. But keep in mind that if you do two up uh, on the side view, it won't really match to the uh, back view as well. So there's a bit of a difference between the references here. But that's fine. Uh, just find a nice balance between the two. At this point, we're just going to tweak the vertices of some of the uh, positions here, or the corners of the box. So I might move this edge down a bit, kind of stretch it out. I might move this tad bit to the side here, grab this vertice, go it up, go to side view, kind of do some similar actions as well. Uh, pretty much just get it to closely match as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
Uh, so now we're ready to go ahead and add a filler box. Let's go into back view. Go into edit mode. We're not in edit mode already. Uh, grab the insert edges here, the inside edges. Shift Alt, select all of the edges. Press E to extrude. Again, uh, and basically just scale it. Press S to scale down and move it inward on the x-axis and just kind of scale it to match the reference as best as you can. And press E again to extrude. And this time we're going to be moving it inside the box. So pretty much move it on the y-axis a tad bits. And now we're ready to fill in the box here. Let's grab all these edges on this side. Hold down shift, select all of them. Press E to extrude, X, and then move it on the x-axis. Uh, and then we'll move it inward. It looks like it's all filled up, but it's actually technically uh, missing some vertices here. So this vertice is not connected. It needs to be connected to this one here. So to merge two vertices, hold down shift, select the first one, and then hold down shift, and then select the second one. Press M to merge, and select at last, or at first, depending on whichever one you selected first. Do the same for the top here. Oops. Shift, select this vertice, and hold down Shift, and select this one as well. Press M to merge it last. And now it's completely filled. So now we're going to add a subdivision modifier. Go back to object mode, add a modifier, subdivision, turn for the poly counts. Uh, go back into edit mode, and we're going to sharpen up these corners here. So press Control R, left click twice. Or once and then left click again once you've uh, pretty much selected your final location of it. So I'm, this is my final location. I'm going to left click it a second time and do the same here. Control R, left click again. Let's do the same here as well. Create this box shape. Looks already a bit nice. Uh, so it's here. You can see a bit of a kind of a problem here. I'm just kind of move some of these vertices to fix this little issue here. Make it a bit more seamless. Try to your best to display this little line here. Uh, it might be helpful to press C and face mode and select all these faces here. You can use the smooth tool to kind of smoothen the area out. Sometimes that doesn't always help. In this case, you know, just do your best to fix these problems, dissipate these lines. So now you'll basically just be tweaking the vertices of all your corners, just kind of finalizing the overall shape. So here I might you know tweak the curve a bit. I might go to side view and just kind of fill in this curve, make it look a little better. Grab these vertices and just move them inward a bit. Kind of clean up the topology a bit. If it's a bit messy for you. It is a bit here for me, uh, so I kind of have to do some edits. Looks fine to me. It may also help to sharpen up this little section here. So go to side view, you can add an edge loop right about here, sharpen up this corner. Uh, you can also add some edge loops on the inside of this little box to sharpen up these little sections. It looks a little bit better. Uh, so now we're ready, basically ready to add some thickness to this piece. You can go back into edit mode on it. Uh, if you're not already in edit mode, select everything, press A, press E to extrude, and just move it inward that little section here, the orange highlighted section, uh, and just move it inward on the x-axis and on the uh, y-axis as well. That's just a good way. I like to add thickness. It's a good way. It sometimes works better than solidified modifier uh, in most cases for me. Uh, so now we're basically just going to sharpen up some of these uh, sections here. So this little edge thickness here uh, uh, needs a bit of a sharpening. So press Control R. On this side, left click once and then move it over. Left click a second time. You do the same again for this side. Just press Control R, left click and move it inward and left click again. And that looks pretty good. It's an even thickness. I think it turned out pretty well. You can maybe flatten out this section here. Uh, so now you can use the proportional editing tool to basically help edit the mesh a bit to match the reference a little bit better. Just press this little button here, go into face mode, press C, and select some of these faces on the outside, and uh, deselect them. 
uh, and then basically just press G to move them outward. If you scroll up all the way with your mouse wheel, it'll basically like uh, adjust the authority of the actual size of the brush. So basically you can scroll up or down as much as you need to. I'm gonna scroll down just a tad uh, downward a bit, just to have a bit more authority. We can go ahead and start adding the details to the uh, box here. The little cylinders, they're pretty easy to make. You can go into object mode, uh, press shift, and right click on the point of the mesh. Press shift A, create cylinder. You can turn on the poly counts down to 12 or 16, it's up to you. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I just like to have it below poly. You rotate it on the x axis 90 degrees and scale it down. And just move it into position here. S and Y make it skinnier. Uh, so now we're going to basically duplicate this piece and move it over to next. Before we do that though, let's go and shade smooth. So right click, shade smooth, add edge split modifier, and there we go. Looks pretty nice. Uh, so you can pretty much ready to start duplicating it. So press Shift D to duplicate this piece. Move it over. You can do it again another second time. So it's like the both. Press Shift D to duplicate. Uh, and it has little two pieces here. To do that, we're just going to add a cube right about here. Scale it down a bit. And we're just going to add some bevels on the corners here. Just scale it down, move it into position. Go into edit mode on the piece. Select each of the four edges on the corners. So one, two, uh, three, and four. Press Control B to bevel. And you can score up with your mouse wheel to increase the num number of bells. I wouldn't add too many, but just add a couple. And adjust the uh, settings here. And once you're done, just go and do it. Uh, basically, you're just going to du duplicate the piece. Go back to object mode and shift D to duplicate. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, you can go back to edit mode and you can pretty much unhide the front piece that we made last time. Uh, so basically, we're just going to be matching the back piece on the sides here to the front piece. Here, you can see that this part is sticking out. We're just going to move it inward a bit and match it to the front piece. Just like that. And just kind of tweak the position of things to make them look nice. And same here as well. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. I'll try to get my best to answer them. Uh, if you could please like and subscribe, it really help out my channel and keep growing my content as well. Uh, but other than that, next time we'll basically be covering future content for the Clinch Bear Armor. Uh, so stay tuned. I hope you guys find this video useful and see you guys next time.